Crucius that are randomly printing in mid-air, a Folger tech that's having quite a few issues, and an update to my Bamboo Saga. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 93. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to YouTube's longest print fail fix video series. Remember, if you do want to submit your failures, you can do so by emailing us YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com or posting on social media and tagging us in it. Also using the hashtag print fix. That way we can take a look at it and feature it in the show. We're actively looking for submissions. So if you want to get some help from an expert, we're here to help. We got some interesting fails for you today, as well as an update to my bamboo saga that uh, might not be going the way that you all might be expecting, or maybe it is. What you might not be expecting is this jump cut to me holding this cat and she's telling you to subscribe and leave a like if you haven't. Now she's off to go do important cat things. Let's get to fixing some fails. First up, we got a failure from Ember Prototypes, whose Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon's gone through some things. And if you don't know about Ember Prototypes, they've got a really cool product that is for camera-assisted XY offset calibration. This is especially valuable if you are working with eye decks or tool changers where you have multiple nozzles and you need them to be at exactly the same point every single time. Having one of those tools is incredibly valuable. Now, we don't have any printers that would benefit from that currently, but if we did, I'd definitely be considering their products because it's, it's pretty awesome. But we've got a pretty rough bamboo failure here, and I guess their AI fail detection did not pick this up. And we've talked about the bamboo AI fail detection in the past where it is spotty at best and if you don't set it to medium, it never finds anything, but medium can give false positives and high is a complete and utter waste of time because it just thinks everything is a failure. But we've got some issues with bed adhesion. This is the bamboo textured build plate, or at least it appears to be the bamboo textured PEI plate. And we've got a pretty serious blob of doom that has unfortunately taken their hot end to the big land of hot ends in the sky. The hot end's not gonna be making it out of this one. And unfortunately, this can happen. When your printers move so fast, if it rams into something, it's gonna bend the heat break to get itself out of the way. We love fast printing and uh, update on my bamboo toward the end of the video. So stay tuned if that's your thing. But for these guys, I don't think they were initially expecting this. Now, it looks like it might have gotten through the first layer and then it peeled off. We've got some schmoo on the build plate. I don't know if that's hand grease from when they realized it, or maybe that's glue from a leftover print. I don't know what that's from, but that could be in some sort of relation to the issues. But it looks like they had an okay first layer. We can see the actual rectangles where the first layer was, but something somewhere got really upsetty and made just a small amount of spaghetti, but you know, then destroyed the hot end. This is why we stress having spare parts on hand. And thankfully, even though it is a closed ecosystem, Bamboo has gotten the pricing of some of their spare parts right. The price of a hot end is like 35 bucks. That's hardened. That's a whole hot end. That's a pretty good value. And as Ember was telling me, they are going to be trying to salvage the thermistor, the heater, and the clip for it all, as well as the hot end cooling fan before they toss it. But unfortunately, there are no user serviceable components outside of those three pieces on an X1 Carbon's hot end. That is now trash. I'm not a huge fan of the fact that you have to throw it away. There isn't a way just to replace the one broken part. You have to replace all of it, but it kind of is what it is. This is what you signed up for when you went with a closed ecosystem. How to deal with this? I don't think Bamboo puts enough Z-Hop in their parts. I've said that from day one. I really want to see more Z-Hop. And while Z-Hop will increase your print time, if you're going to be moving at these speeds, hop way more than you think you need. Heck, hop a full millimeter. It's safer at the end of the day and will result in a better product and a better print. To be clear, if the Z move doesn't happen fast enough, you might see a little blob and that can be worked on. But I would rather have to deal with a little bit of sanding than problems like this from time to time when the printer gets a little upset. With a Z hop, it's not likely to collide unless there is a big warp or something like that occurring on the build plate. So if you are having issues of your printer running into parts and then knocking them off the build plate, more Z-Hop is often a great solution to this problem. Next up, a fail from our Patreon Discord. This is Man of the Sky who was printing out some heels and uh, well, it looks like Dorothy's gone. There's no place like 
the part just randomly messed up. Take a look. They actually captured this on video. We can see Mini's doing all right. No issues. Printing just fine. Looks like to be a fairly stock Prusa Mini. Handle, Z-brace, otherwise pretty stock. And then it moves up and then starts printing again. This is the direct result of bad G-code. In a case like this, it is hard to determine what caused it. I've seen this happen when computers tend to freeze or have some jittering during slicing. It's not common that we see it occur. And if you do find this happening often, it is good to go ahead and completely wipe your USB stick, SD card, whatever you might be using in your printer. It is good to go ahead and completely format it because you could have an issue on that drive as well. If you're running the stock SD card that came with your machine, it's probably time to replace it. The Mini uses a full USB port. Prusa actually provides you with a USB thumb drive. And as far as I can tell, they're in good shape, but having a spare is never a bad thing and going over to check it is not bad either. If you've been printing long enough, you kind of know how large an STL file sliced into G code should be. And if the file is way less than you think, it would be good to just look at reslicing it and making sure that it looks good. If you are the type of person that is now all of a sudden heavily paranoid this is going to happen, you can take your G-code files, toss them back into Prusa Slicer, assuming you slice them in Prusa Slicer, but you can use basically any G-code, and it will show you what it's going to print. It could have caught this. Now, we never check it because this is not a problem that happens often enough for me to care. It went from 25 to 85%, I'm told. So not a ton of time lost, not a ton of material lost. This is a great learning opportunity though, and I think it's a great one to share with you guys. Has this ever happened to you? And I'd love to know if it has, and what you identified as the potential problem for it. Let me know in those comments. Next up, a fail from a fan who emailed us, which you can do as well if you want to get your failures looked at by an expert and featured on the YouTube channel. You can do so by emailing us youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. This is from Hypermotive Racing, and uh, they've got some problems. They've got a Folger Tech FT6 that has got some issues with wiggling of the parts. Take a look here. This should be vertical. These should not have a lot of the back and forth lines that we see. And for those that don't know, the FT6 is an older printer. Folger Tech doesn't make them anymore. And uh, they need a lot of work to be useful. They've done a lot of mods to this printer. We can see we have linear rails X and Y. And yeah, the bed is a huge rectangle. We'll post the specs for it on the screen so you guys can see, but these, these printers are no joke. We've got a lot of wiggling, so let's see what they've done. We've got turning acceleration down to 70, jerk to two and a half. The same thing, but acceleration at 400, jerk to one. They've increased the current on the stepper motor drivers. They've added a cooling fan to the drivers. They changed drivers from TMC 2208s to 2209s. Both are standalone. They swapped the drivers in the same slot. They moved the drivers to another slot. They ran with different stepper cables. They adjusted belt tension and they checked that the stepper grub screws are all good. That is a lot of things that you can check to make sure that it's okay. I had some ideas, but so far we haven't narrowed it down. When you're dealing with a printer like this, your rails can actually wiggle a little bit. And with belts this long, belt stretching is a real problem and is an actual thing that can become an issue. And yes, for those wondering, it's not actually a Core XY, it's Cartesian. It's a dual motor, y-axis cartesian printer it's really really weird or maybe that's the x i honestly don't know how they look at it but it's really weird and if your motors aren't running at the exact same pitch and they're not in tune with each other the big thing is making sure your motors stay in tune with each other it could be accelerating decelerating a little bit differently for each but i thought the culprit could be the hot end itself we had an issue like this on our lulzbot taz 6 where it would look just like this you have some layers that would be shifted and we can see here th there's some odd kind of shifting that you don't expect we found that in the taz 6 the way the mount system works the hot end can rock back and forth and it can get stuck in either position back or forth that caused the problems once we identified that we just printed some shims to go in there and keep it from moving we never had the issue again i'm told that's not the problem and so i'm honestly a little stumped we can see on a what should be vertical leaning tower of pisa it is leaning but just not in the way that you expect this is so weird to me i thought that maybe this was z-axis binding but given that they've done all these upgrades to the new stepper motor drivers 
I don't see that being a thing. So the best thing that I can think of is it's either that those belts are just stretching and causing the printer to kind of wiggle a little bit. You might have some Z axis binding or it's the hot end wiggling. But so far, none of those seem to be what's actually going on. I would love your guys' input on this because this one has me stumped. If you've watched the channel enough, you know I don't get stumped very often on prints like this, but these look okay. We, we do have some wobble that could be Z-based. And yeah, maybe Z-wobble is doing it and it's just binding because the Z-motors aren't moving in the same way. I don't know. There are a lot of possibilities. And when the printer is this freaking big, there's a lot of possibility here that if you look at it, there's not a lot of bracing and it could just be kind of at a skew in some areas. Love to know your thoughts. Weird Y-axis jump. Ender 3 S1. First skip was around Z170. The second one at around Z200. 60 millimeters a second has never happened before. Belts haven't been touched since I first assembled it years ago. So we've got an Ender that's uh had some rough times on these shifts. So we've got the first shift here, second shift up there, third shift is not clocked in yet. So don't worry. That's not even a good joke, Grant. Come on, that's not even a good joke. Given that this is an Ender, and it looks like it's had quite a few mods, it is Kingrin PETG, brand new Push Slicer 2.6, and it's not a catastrophe. They were going to slide an aluminum pipe inside the part to increase stiffness anyway, so they will just saw away the affected bits and reattach them correctly. The aesthetics call for a wrap around the handle in that spot anyways, though it won't be too apparent, so that's nice. But because it's an Ender, I'm wondering, we have a belt up here, so... I think you have a dual Z mod, but do you have a dual Z screw mod? And is your Z axis actually level? If for some reason your Z axis is slightly skewed, at some point it's going to bind. And that could cause this, but because we're seeing the warp on the Y axis, I'm not exactly certain it's going to be Z related. If we look here, we can see that there was a little bit of pulling away from the supports. So maybe there was a blob the printer hit or what I've seen before that these touch probes, specifically this one being a CR touch can have some issues. Also, please, please fix your wiring that please, please like just, just, just cut this out, put a new wire in and extend it. Please, that's not safe. We've seen sometimes where the touch probes can fall mid print. I don't know if that was the issue that we saw here, but it's definitely a possibility when you consider it. I think what is more likely here is that the printer ran into something and skipped a step. But as you get to really tall prints, the momentary inertia on the Y axis goes up quite a bit. And for an ender, it might not have the stepper motor to handle it. I would check to make sure your Y axis belt is also pretty tight. If it's not tight, that could be the issue. Because as your part gets heavier, that is more weight that the motor now needs to slow down and speed up and slow down and speed up every single time it's printing and moving. And that's why we have somebody asking about the max acceleration. If you accelerate too fast, you're going to skip steps and there's no way around it. So I like all the advice given here. A plus. Strange wall blobs details in comments. They're using an Ender 3 Pro with a micro Swiss NG extruder. That is a really nice extruder. I would love to take a look at one. If you guys want me to take a look at it, let me know we can get one in. Within the first five millimeters, there's usually some small blobs forming on the outer wall. They disappear after about five millimeters of printing, but I can't seem to find the solution. I have UBL auto leveling, so I know the first layer is perfect. My E-steps are calibrated as well, and the extrusion multiplier. I've tried cleaning and regressing the Z screw, believe you mean regreasing, but nothing is fixing the issue. Any thoughts? This is cooling. This is 100% a cooling issue. You are having some curling on your part and it's not cooling effectively when you are doing some of those layers. And what's happening is it's bunching up. We've had this happen and it's normally caused by cooling. It could also be from over extrusion. It looks like that is a transition point from a solid layer to these walls where we get these blobs. If you are over extruding even a little bit on solid layers, it will be kind of obvious when it happens. But if this is happening on every print, I know that you said you calibrated your E-steps, but I do want to make sure you're not over extruding. And often, even if you do have your E-steps calibrated correctly, it is better to run like 95%. We know that's what Prusa does. I've never known why, 
but I get beautiful prints from it, so I don't question it. And I believe bamboo does something similar as well. This is either cooling, over extrusion, or both, at least in my experience, and can happen if that first layer is too close and you get this material buildup that eventually works itself out of the system. Just because you have auto bed leveling or auto bed tramming does not mean that your first layer Z offset is set correctly. We'll cart that video so you can take a look because even with printers that auto level, they don't do auto Z offset. Well, some of them do now, but they didn't used to. This printer doesn't do that. Last but not least, a bamboo update. I have given up. Bamboo support is of no help to me. They are starting to tell me that I'm changing the subject to different problems when I'm just trying to explain the problems that I have. So I have given up on support. I have stopped replying to my support ticket and I have told them to close it. I'm gonna solve the problems on my own. Knock on, I don't have anything that's made of wood. Oh, hold on. But uh, knock on cardboard, cause like that that's kind of wood. This is some really nice galaxy blue. Voron, Trident coming soon. But uh, I think I figured it out. I randomly ran some CFPC, so that's carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate through the bamboo, and it printed pretty well. This is one of those prints, and it looks pretty good. Have some support settings I gotta work on, but that's a me thing, that's not the printer thing. And it printed perfectly. So then I started running rings for the polymaker spools that we have, because polymaker put out official rings. We'll link to those in the description. They worked. So I tried it with the crappiest PLA that I have that is pretty much guaranteed to break in Bowden tubes worked. It only broke in the Bowden tube once and the printer figured itself out. I have reason to believe that there was some sort of burr in the system and the carbon fiber just sanded it smooth. We only have about six successful prints on this machine. This print was done on Monday and I am currently recording this video on Wednesday. So we, we don't have a lot of evidence to state it, but so far the machine's been working. I don't want to say it too loud because you know, it can hear me. I don't know. Apparently running really hardcore material through it solved some of the problems that I was having. We also ran some parts for a Prusa Mark 3S Plus that we recently repaired on a live stream that got a little toasty in a heater chamber. We'll card to that video so you guys can take a look. It was about a two and a half hour stream. After running the CFPC through it, it printed the ABS parts with no problems at all. Parts that were failing over and over and over again, all of a sudden printed without any issues. It is over extruding, which I'm getting in some parts that I think can solve it. But Bamboo went on, you know, lines of that, it's my aftermarket print bed. Then they went on, it's the feeder alignment parts that are a known upgrade to use on the machine so you don't burn through the first stage feeder input. So I, I don't know. They seem to be blaming everything, but that the machine is having a problem. You know, hammering in on two very small things that make the printer perform better than factory. And when I removed my parts and put in the stock build plate, I had more problems, which they started blaming on things that didn't make sense either. Anyways, I'm hoping that I can be on the up and up with this machine now. I am still incredibly frustrated with the support that I've received from Bamboo Lab. It is not the type of support that I expect for a $1,600 expense, especially considering you can spend half of that and get considerably better support. Hell, you can spend a third of that and get significantly better support at companies like Prusa. And that's a fact. As far as I'm concerned, we got to have a talk about customer service and customer support and what it looks like. So if you'd like to join me this weekend, we're going to talk all about that on our podcast on Sunday, 1 p.m. Join me. It'll be fun. But this is something that I want to bring to mention. I don't know if it's fixed. We've had a couple of good prints on it so far, other than the tolerances being a little bit tighter than I'd want. It is running as expected. I don't know if anyone else is having a similar issue. Maybe try writing some carbon fiber through it. I don't know, man. At this point, it worked. At least for right now, it works. But we do have three weeks left until my six month update with Bamboo. So this one should be very interesting to see what it was like having this machine for six months. So you want to see that video, get subscribed, and stay tuned. That's all I have for you guys today. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought of these fails, and what you think might be wrong with that Folger Tech FT6. Stay safe out there, don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do in making these videos possible. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series if you want to take a look to see some failures and how we fixed them. Right next to that will be our look at Proof Slicer 2.6. It's finally out! 
and it's pretty awesome. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.